Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to chat to you about how to stop hating your own work and how to become a more productive, inspired creative. But before we get into this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell button. And let's talk about it over coffee first. <laughs> Okay, a minute of real talk. When I started photography, I was really, really young. I was only around 16. It was all fun and games. It was really, really cool. I loved doing it and it was really, really fun. But eventually, you know, I started getting more commercial jobs and I started getting clients and it was great because I was making money, you know? It was very stressful at the same time. I was a kid and I had to provide for myself and I had to pay rent for the first time. And that financial pressure really killed my passion for photography for a very long time. It became a means to surviving. It became a means to living a semi-comfortable life and not being always late with rent as I was. So that was one of the first times in my life where I felt very seriously in a creative rut. I didn't really want to do photography. I didn't really feel like I could be creative because I had to make money and earn money and pay rent and do all the adult shit that I didn't want to do. I hated everything I was doing. If I did a shoot, I would absolutely despise retouching it and it really, really affected my mental health over everything else because I was constantly forcing myself to do something that I really didn't want to do. You do need to be very creative in order to be able to produce good work. I feel like any time I was forced to do something that I didn't want to do, my creativity went down completely. And once it does, you start producing shit work. Hands up if you ever thought that some creative was way better than you, their work was way better, their life is way better, and just in general, they're amazing and you suck. Sometimes it's very hard to stop comparing yourself to other people. We see other people's work and we have the tendency to always compare ourselves to whoever is better and look at our own life and at our own career and work and say that we don't have the same opportunities and we don't have the same connections and we are not in the same industry. A lot of the time when I talk to people and when I ask them why do they feel like they are not where they want to be, they just put it in terms of I am not like X, Y and Z. And I feel like when you're doing photography, it's so important to create your own identity and to work on stuff that really works for you personally. Comparing yourself continuously to other creatives is very counterproductive. It's something that has caused me so much anguish throughout my career. And till this day, whenever I get a comment saying, oh, I wish I took photos like you, I wish I worked with creatives like you, you're so lucky. Luck is such a weird word to use because I didn't get where I am because I'm lucky. I got where I am because I am really passionate about doing what I do and I put a lot of time and effort into what I do. So just a quick editing note as I'm editing this video, I just wanted to say that I know that I am lucky in a lot of ways in you know, a way where I was born into certain circumstances and I was allowed to do photography in the first place. But all I'm talking about in this video is just to not really blame luck because you don't really know what a person had to go through to get to the point where they're at. You know, when you look at social media, you only see the glossy bits of our work and of our lives. Thinking that somebody has a perfect life and a very easy straight on career doesn't necessarily mean it's true. And usually it's not. Usually it's pretty complicated pretty long so just keep that in mind for the future and if you ever feel down everybody has their own journey and it's never really easy remember that there's always going to be better people than you it's a given there's always going to be somebody who has more money more opportunity better equipment you need to concentrate on you what situation you're at and just make the best out of it out of my own experience of doing photography for such a long time, I find it's very, very easy 
to lose perspective on your work when you're the only one staring at it continuously for hours and hours on end. There has been so many times where I just couldn't appreciate my work anymore because I went from planning it to producing it to editing the photos afterwards. And when you stare at your own work for such a long time, you become so tired of it very quickly and I find sometimes it's very, very good to get somebody else's perspective. Try and assess your own strengths and weaknesses. See what works and what doesn't, but be very realistic about it and be very constructive about it. Don't just say, I hate everything, my life sucks. Try and figure out what went wrong, but also what went right and try improve on it on your next shoot. I find I'm the most happy and I strive as a creative when I make progress. If I did something that I wasn't happy with and then I improve upon it on the next shoot, it makes me so damn happy and it makes my work so much more exciting because I've done maybe something a bit different or maybe I tried a different focal length or experimented with something else. At the end of the day, photography is art. We need to experiment, we need to get excited about stuff. The comfort zone is where the dreams come to die. <laughs> There is nothing worse than being stuck in the same cycle of work where you produce the same thing over and over and over and over. It's just dreadful. It's the same as nine to five. It doesn't make any difference if you do nine to five or if you produce the same shit every single week. So I think the most important thing for yourself and for your career is to create something that is so outside of your comfort zone and so outrageous that is going to scare you shitless. Because that's when your creativity really, really kicks in, where you have to create something that is completely not your usual stuff. I usually look at different things on Pinterest and stuff that is really, really unusual. And then I try and get inspired by it. You get so much creativity flowing through you because you have this exciting new thing that you don't really know. Don't be afraid to make mistakes and to be outrageous. Sometimes not everything is going to work out. Sometimes you try something outrageous and you fail at it miserably. And it's totally okay. There is no such a thing as wrong thing when it comes to creativity and your own photography. You are learning, you are discovering who you are as a creative and knowing what you like and what you don't like is a part of this process. There are so many situations in my career where I thought that I did something wrong or I screwed up, but it was just a lesson for the future and how not to repeat my own mistakes. And it helped me in my professional career. It helped me not to screw up on my client shoots. It was all a learning curve and you have to treat this whole creative journey as a learning curve because that's what it is at the end of the day. Finally, if nothing else works, give yourself a break. Either a short break, like a retouching break, where you just go out and go for a little walk and explore the beautiful neighborhoods in your city. going on a longer break, taking a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month off, and just figuring out what you want to do and how you want to approach it from now on, what your goals are, what your dreams and aspirations are for the future, getting inspired of what's around you, whatever works for you. But please make sure to give yourself that space to just miss photography a tiny bit and to get inspired again, because you are going to miss it and you are going to get inspired. It might take some time, it might be six months, but you will come back to it. And sometimes forcing yourself to do something that you don't want 
even though it seems like a better option short term, might backfire long term because you will get really, really sick and tired of it. And giving it the space, giving it the time will make a world of a difference and it's going to make it so much better for you and you're going to come back with a bang with an amazing photo shoot. Okay guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time.